So we're moving into chapter seven, estimating a population parameter. And in this video, I'm going to be covering section 7-1, estimating a population proportion. So what I like to do, or what I usually do in my class is, um, as a first uh, learning experience in estimating a population parameter, uh, I have my students do an activity where I have them guess my age. So hence, that's why there's a video feed so that you guys I'm watching online can also play along. So if you had to guess my age, uh, what would your best guess be? So if you have my notes, uh, go ahead and put down your best guess here. All right, so you, without knowing me, you're, you're probably, your guess is probably not correct. So by how many years would you say your guess is off? So give or take, All right? So you're gonna write that down here and we're gonna call that the margin of error. All right, so let's go ahead and fill this out. So in a prior semester, uh, I, as I recall, the, the consensus was that the, my students' guess uh, was about 36 years of age uh, and plus or minus like four years, right? So essentially what, what this is, is this gives us a range of values or an, an interval of values, right? So essentially, so we get, we get that their best guess was 36, plus or minus four years. So if we're going to, that's gonna be like subtract four years, add four years, right? So essentially what we have here is that um, the best, the, the interval of values ranges from 32 to 40. So again, uh, the 32 here was obtained by, by subtracting the margin of error from your best guess and adding uh, four, the margin of error, to your, your best guess, right? Plus or minus four, that's what that means. So we get this range of values, right? So we get this range of values, and the way we interpret this would be my instructor's age is between 32 years or 32 and 40 years of age. All right, and then the last thing I have my students do um, is um, if you had to assign a, a confident, a, a percentage to indicate how confident you are that my actual age is between 32 to 40, what would that be? So, uh, you know, if you say, if you look at this and you, you're you pretty confident and you say 99%, right? So 99%, then uh, we get the following. So the way we would interpret this is, is the following. So to interpret this, this entire thing would be the following. I am 99% confident, right? I am 99% confident that my instructor's actual age is between 32 and 40 years. All right, so now what does this have to do with what we're learning, which is estimating a population parameter? Again, in this section, we're, we're specifically looking at proportions, and then in section 7-2, we're specifically looking at a population mean, right? So what does this have to do? Well, here's a, a, a um, like an example problem that you're going to see. So we, let's say we have a population of U.S. adults, right? So our population is U.S. adults. And in the United States, you know, there's millions and millions of adults. So it's very, very difficult to sample from the entire uh, population. So again, we're, I'm sorry, to, to ask everybody in the population. So we're going to, essentially, we're going to take a sample, right? And let's just say for the sake of this problem, that what we're interested in is the percentage of those who approve of same-sex marriage, right? So too many people who want to um, that to actually ask to figure out the actual percentage, and we're going to call that percentage or proportion, right? Proportion percentage is a one point two represent a proportion. We're going to represent that with lowercase p. So our notation lowercase p represents the population proportion. Oops. So the population proportion, and, and in this problem, the proportion, the proportion is the proportion of those who approve of same-sex marriage, right? So let's just pretend that in our sample, we, we sample like a thousand people, and of those thousand people, like 600 people, uh, 600 of them approve of same-sex marriage. So Again, we want to know what P is. P in this problem represents the um, 
percentage of all Americans or U.S. adults who approve of same-sex marriage. But because there's so many people, we took a sample, we just, we have to rely on P hat, which is our estimate of P. And P hat is the sample proportion. So P hat is the sample proportion. And in this case, again, the sample proportion is of those in the sample, how, what percentage of those in the sample approve of same-sex marriage? So now that's easily found by doing X divided by N, right? This is a part over whole problem. So this is going to be 600 divided by 1,000, which gives us 0.6, which is equal to 60%. So I want to kind of hone in on this number. So this number, this sample proportion, is synonymous to the best guess, the 36 when you guys were guessing my age, right? It's the 36 here is your best guess at my actual age. This 60%, this sample proportion, is the best guess at um, P, which is the population proportion of those who actually believe in uh, or prove in uh, same-sex marriage. All right, so this is our best guess. Uh, but the thing is, we know we're wrong. We're, we're probably off because this is based off of a sample, like based off of a thousand people, where in actuality, the US population of adults is millions and millions of people. So we need a margin of error. So we need a margin of error. And we're gonna represent that with the letter E. So E represents, is the notation for margin of error. So let's say that the margin of error for this problem was 4%. Now, in, in an actual problem, we are, not, we are not like just putting in a random margin of error. That's something that we need to know how to calculate. All right, so I, I wanna emphasize that uh, the two values that I highlighted are things that we need to know how to calculate that's based off of the sample and based off of the confidence level, okay? So again, these are values that I'm going to show you guys how to calculate, but for now, just know that these two values exist. So what we get is we get this, uh, what we call a confidence interval. So confidence interval. So a confidence interval, uh, interval as it suggests, what inter interval means is its range of numbers. And what we get is because what, what we're actually doing, again, take, taking a step back, we want to know what P is. P is the um, proportion of all U.S. adults who approve of same-sex marriage. But because it's very difficult to get, we're going to estimate it, right? And we get, in estimating it, we're, we created a confidence interval. And this interval is something like, it's 60% plus or minus 4%, right? So this is our confidence interval because what it creates is it creates a range of values or interval of values. And the, the interval value ranges from uh, 56% to 64%. So what we're saying is that the actual percentage of those who approve of same-sex marriage for all U.S. adults is between 56% to 64%. Now, how did I get this 56% and how did I get this 64%? So very similar to how I did, uh, you know, 36 minus four, 36 plus four to get the 32 and 40. I did the same thing here. So I did the same thing here. I took, uh, so 60 is our best guess, right? So 60 uh, is our best guess. Uh, and again, it's not the best guess. We're gonna actually call it the best point estimate the best point estimate for P is 60. And if you add the margin of error, right, plus or minus the margin of error is plus 4%, minus 4%, we get this, uh, the lower and the upper range. And that creates a interval of values. And that's what we're gonna call as our confidence interval. And it's also very important that there's there's three ways to write a confidence interval. This is the first way, and I'm gonna to refer to this way as uh, the plus minus form. Even though there's not an actual name for this, I'm gonna call it the plus minus form. But there's another form that you need to know, two other forms actually. The next one is to write it in, in as an inequality. So I'll show you guys how to write the inequality. So given that we figured out the lower and the upper range 
of the confidence interval. The inequality form is written as 56% less than P less than 64%. So essentially what this means is that uh, this inequality means, what it means is that P, the population proportion of those who approve of same-sex marriage is between 56% to 64%. And then there's also another form that you need to know to be familiar with, and that is called the interval form. So I'll put these, I'll put names for these. Um, so I'll write the names here. So let me, let me give myself some space by moving that. So this is called the plus minus. Again, this is the name I'm giving it. There's actually not a name for it. Um, and this is the inequality form. And the last form is called the interval form. So interval form. And so the interval form looks a lot like the inequality form, uh, but there's a, a an open parentheses, so and then 56, so this is the lower, and then the upper part of the range is that, and then open parentheses or closed parentheses like that. All right, uh, and then there, there's one more thing that you have to remember that we, we, we need. We need a confidence level as well. So I'm running out of room here, but uh, let me let me go ahead and and delete this stuff here. So we also need a confidence level. So a confidence level is something that is chosen. It it is not actually. I'll just put it right here. So the confidence level is something that is chosen. It is not something that you need to find. So typically what happens is the, the confidence level is chosen and you're given a sample values and your your job or your task is to find the um, best point estimate, which is a sample proportion in this section, and the margin of error. So you, this is, you need to calculate this, you need to know how to calculate this, and this is something that's given, right? And give and once you calculate these two things, you should know how to write it in these two other forms as well. In addition to that, sometimes you're going to be given this form or this form, and you need to know how to put it into this form as well. So that's what we're going to talk about. We have a lot of stuff, right? So let's look at definitions first. So here, here are some definitions that you need to know. So the first one is a point estimate. So a point estimate is a single number used to estimate a population parameter. Again, so here, the point estimate for the population proportion is the sample proportion. So the best point estimate for um, proportion is p hat. And again, the notation is p hat, right? p hat is the sample proportion. And the best point estimate for a mean is x bar, which is a sample mean, right? And then you can read these two definitions as well. We talked about the confidence interval and the margin of error. So for 7-1, estimating a population um, proportion, uh, here are some notations that you have to know. We talked about a few of these, right? We talked about P, we talked about N, we talked about X, we talked about P hat. Uh, Q hat, all you got to know there is that it's equal to 1 minus P hat. Uh, uppercase E is the margin of error. And we also talked about these three forms of the confidence interval, right? So these are the three forms of the confidence interval. And then we also talk about the confidence level. And the confidence level is something that's given. You don't need to know how to find. It's just something that you're given as part of the problem that you need to know. You need to be given that in order to do anything in, the, in this section. And then there's also something called the critical value, which we've been introduced to in the, in the uh, past uh, sections. Uh, that's something that's going to be relevant in this section as well. And let me just go over um, you know, formulas that you need to know. And these are the formulas that um, uh, is going to be used to figure out the values that we need to know. Like for example, like p hat, critical values, the margin of error. Right? These are the formulas for them. Right? There's two formulas, and I'll explain why. Uh, this given ci, I, this ci represents um, critical. I'm sorry, confidence interval. Let's go ahead and write that down up here. So ci means confidence interval. Okay, and so whenever you're given the confidence interval, these are that's what it, it's specifying here. Then you can use these formulas. Otherwise, you're going to have to use these formulas. <clears throat> uh, and then there's two ways you can calculate or construct a confidence interval. Uh, the first way is 
using I, I call it by hand but it's you pretty much using the formulas and that's how you would create it right following these steps and then the easy way is using the TI-84 calculator or TI-83 calculator, right, by following these steps. So this is the easy way. This is the hard way. There's a lot of stuff that I covered here that I covered in this video so far. But just know that we're going to, once we look into the problems, we're, we're going to do a lot of them so that you get comfortable doing it, right? So with anything, especially in math, the first time you see it, it's very um, hard, difficult. But then as the more practice you get, the more the better you're going to get in this last part right here is um uh, we have confidence levels that we use a lot and we call those like those are going to be like our common confidence level right the common confidence level that we use a lot in in this uh, class is 90 percent 95 percent or 99 percent and those critical values they never change so the critical z values for those uh confidence level the the critical z value z sub alpha divided by two they're always these values so you please use these values when you're when in your calculations of uh, the stuff that we're going to be calculating like margin of error um, and whatnot right please use these um, v critical values for these confidence levels so if if it says that the problem states the confidence level is 90 percent use this critical value if you're calculating the margin of error and the margin of error is typically where we're going to be using the the critical values in our in our calculations all right so I'm gonna end this video here in the next video we're gonna go cover um, working out some problems so that you guys will feel a lot more comfortable working out these problems I know it's a very confusing now but just kind of um, know that we're gonna go through a lot of problems and you're gonna feel a lot more confident as we go through more problems all right, I'll see you in the next video.